You know, from time to time we do stories about people who have been wrongly convicted of crimes, who served time and then were released. Inevitably, they are largely happy stories. But what happens next? Tonight, ABC 7 News reporter Wayne Friedman follows up on one such story with a bittersweet ending. Come on. That's right. That's my girl. You're looking at one man's version of heaven on earth, fresh air, the trust of a stepchild, a loving fiancé who's five months pregnant. He has much to live for. Second chance right now is like a new life. It's a long way from where he's been and further still from the convicted killer that society made him out to be. That guy right there is me, Maurice Antoine Caldwell. It was a drug deal gone bad, a murder in San Francisco's Alamany projects in 1990. A witness behind the window said she saw Maurice Caldwell holding the shotgun. That sent him to state prison for 27 years to life, even as he defended his innocence. All I think about every day, how I was going to get myself out, why I was going to fight to, to come home. So maybe now you remember the day two years ago when Maurice Caldwell walked free after 22 years in prison. A judge had ordered a second trial due to an incomplete defense, a technicality. But that retrial never happened because of lost evidence and because that eyewitness had died. I got got out that day with with hope, with, with excitement. Now? Now, I just, you know, hey, man, my life, you know, I just hope it get better. The world Maurice Caldwell returned to at 44 years old had changed from the one he knew at 22. He emerged from prison with no modern skills and a back injury that keeps him from working. As an exoneree, he's become more adapted to life behind bars than life in society. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm like devastated. Maurice's lawyer, Paige Kanev, works on such cases for the Northern California Innocence Project. She has heard such complaints from exonerees time and again. Exonerees don't get anything when they get out. I don't get nothing. I, I wouldn't, I don't, man, they haven't gave me nothing. They don't get counseling. They don't get housing. Not a bus card, not a phone number, not a direction, nothing. You get an apology? No, you don't don't get an apology. You know what I'm saying? You don't get nothing. The state does give money to people who've been wrongfully imprisoned, $100 a day. For Maurice, after all his time behind bars, that could total more than $700,000. But there's a catch. The process takes years, and he must appear before a state board, and he must prove his innocence. The problem is, the judge who released Maurice never dealt with that. It's unfair for so many reasons. It's unfair because he's already been so wronged. It's unfair because the state has already conceded that they cannot prove him guilty. But the system, as it stands, does have defenders. Among them, Caldwell's original prosecutor, Al Giannini, who still believes Maurice committed the crime, even though another man has confessed. I think he ought to count himself lucky that he got a break, that he did. And I really don't think the taxpayers need to give him a bunch of money on top of it. That's a game, you know. It's, it, uh, the DA will never admit that they did wrong when they know they was wrong. Two years out of prison, and this is Maurice Caldwell's postscript, a man with responsibilities on welfare, in limbo, and yet still relishing every simple pleasure. A guy who spends a lot of time on the couch watching crime dramas and living his own aftermath. He's never had this in prison. In Sacramento, Wayne Friedman, ABC7. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Conversations with Koji. Definitely bringing that great information, bringing those great shows. And like I said, that was my man, Maurice Caldwell. You see, ABC done a special on him and his family, you know, talking about him being falsely accused, talking about how the person stepped up and said he did it. And Maurice is still being treated as, you know, you know, as the accuser, as the person that done the crime. I think it's a shame. And as y'all can see, and this is what I want everybody to do. You can go to conversationswithkoji.com. On our TV, you will see Maurice's story on ABC, you know, showcasing his whole situation. And, hey, I got my brother here with me today who's been my co-host. And we've been doing this one year strong as of today. Maurice, what's up with you, brother? 
Man, what's up? It don't stop, Cody. How you doing? Man, I'm doing fine, Happy man. Happy to be here, man. Oh, you know what? It's a pleasure for you to be here with me. Like I said, you've been starting with me since day one, and I do appreciate it, man. But, you know, I told everybody they can go. We got it on the TV. Everybody, if you go to conversationswithkoji.com and you can see Maurice's special, you can see this for yourself, and you can see this guy say, hey, he's lucky that he got out. You know, don't be worrying about no money and all that. Just be lucky that you got your freedom. I need to introduce my panel i got here with me today uncle drew how you doing today and we're doing it again this week uncle drew how important is it hey everybody out there hello uh this is very important maurice how you doing bud is he still there i'm doing, I'm doing good uncle drew yes yes I'm all here, right man, man. Hey, you know i'm happy I'm, yeah i'm happy to hear your voice again man that you got your freedom and uh i want to say good afternoon to you and god bless you man man uh feeling this mutual man and thank you for being here again and let's keep it going. You got right. it. There it is. So I got my producer, Jay, who's filling in for Miss Peaches today. Jay ain't able, I mean, Miss Peaches ain't able to be on the show today. Miss Peaches, we got love for you. We got love for the whole team. Whoever, you know, hey, Marlene, Jamie, I mean, Big Blaze, the whole crew. And everybody know who y'all are. Alice, the whole crew, Queen, everybody who ain't been in. in yeah, spirit. yeah, they with us in spirit, <laughs> definitely. But uh, Jay is taking over today for Miss Peaches. Jay, what would you like to say to Maurice and what oh. you think about the show Part five that we have in today. Part five, Maurice. It's been a pleasure having you a part of our, our team. And I just wanted to point out to the world that it's been an, a year, May 7th, since our first part of this series. And it's going to continue to go um, on as far as we can see and strong and, and help all the exonerees that are out there. That's so right. we appreciate you being on with us again. Ms. Jay, I thank you from the heart and from my soul. And I'm honored to be here for many times as y'all will allow me to be here. And I thank you and the Cody Show as well for keeping it going. Oh yeah, as you, a team. Oh man, we like I said, you my co-host. When I do these shows, you got to come on with me, man. Because let me tell you something: you the one that definitely sat down and broke it all down to me on the phone. Me and you talked on the phone one night. I know what four and a half hours, and you broke it all, and you <laughs> broke real. it. And you broke it all down to me, you know, from A to Z. Koji, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to uh, check out. It's who you need to talk to. You know what I'm saying? You definitely uh -huh. broke it down. But, you know, hey, we can't take nothing away from the person that make me sound good on the air, my board man, Ryan. We want to thank you, too. Much love to you. Ryan's great. Get on the mic. Oh, thank you very much, Koji. Always a pleasure to be here. Ryan, let me ask you a question. Now, you've been hearing these shows for a year strong. What can't you still believe that you're hearing from these shows you know what I'm saying? What just blows you away from these shows? Really just that the justice system would let down its citizens that bad. Yeah. Break it down real quick. Well, just you would think that people would go out of their way in the justice system especially to make sure that they're doing a good job, but then you find out that it's like any other person, that there's going to be half-assing. And like if the prosecution has evidence that they know clear somebody's name, they'll deliberately not use it because they want that percentage on their record. That's right. There it is. Now, see, that's my boy, guy. Keep your mic, keep your mic fresh, Ryan. Keep your mic fresh. Now, see, that's my boy, guy. I told you, all the way around the board, we got talent, how we do it. And But let me tell you something. You can't help but do nothing from learn, but learn from these shows that I do. You know what I'm saying? So that's why everybody's so game tight that's affiliated with me and what we do. So I just want to say, excuse me, I just want to say to Maurice, man, you know, I, I'm really sorry. We're going we to talk to Maurice for a minute, and then we'll have another guest coming in. And, uh, Jay, you know, let's tell who's on the show first, and then I'm going to go to Maurice. I'd love to. We have Richard Rosen coming back from last week. We can't wait to hear from him again. He's uh, an emeritus of law, and he um, is a retired professor emeritus of law and started the UN, helped start the UNC um, Innocence Project in North Carolina. So we want to welcome him. And Jeffrey Deskovic and William Lopez, they're coming out back in the, in the second, second hour. hour. And also... A uh, great guest, Kenzel Evans. I can't wait to hear from him. Yeah. He's an exoneree as well. Oh, yeah. So we got a great show. And Maurice, uh, Kenzel, I talked to him on the way into the show today, and he said he definitely want to talk to you about some stuff. Man, I'm here. I'm here. I'm open. Okay. So what I want to... Okay, so what what I want to do, Maurice, I want to go to you real quick because, like I said, we're going to interview you for 30 minutes and then uh, Richard will be coming in. Maurice, I want to ask you a question. When you look back at that story that you just done on ABC, how does it make you feel when you hear what he said? You ought to be lucky that you got your freedom. You don't need to worry about money. Just thank God that you out and go on and move on. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was that was, was the, the so-called D.A. Al Giannitti, man. You know, it was like... You know, to me, when I when I seen that, it, it, at first it was a shocking 
But then I just had to look at it and look at it for what it's worth and accept the fact that this man had, was the one that was a part of the corruption that sent me there. <clears throat> so what was did he find in place of, you know, me being home now that this man should consider himself lucky? Come on, what, what, what do our justice system consider a criminal as you may consider lucky? You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Let's look at the breakdown in the system. You know what I'm saying? The incompetency of your officers, your court system, and what you did. That was, that was, that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no luck on my part. It was, my, my blessing was prevailed. My, my hearing for innocence was prevailed, was, was, was prevailed, and it was heard. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's that, man, come on, man. How can we say, count myself lucky? And then he say, the state shouldn't be in place to, to get, do this. Come on, man. It should be a system. You know what I'm saying? And you should be on board with that same system instead of steady fighting against this, man. You know, the, the Innocent Project, you know, all over the United States, you know what I'm saying? But let me just speak on the one that I'm a part of, the Santa Clara University. I mean, Santa Clara, uh, uh, Northern California Innocent Project. And these people have been in my in my life every from day one, you know what I'm saying, from my fight, man. And like I said, I stand by them, you know, 100%, you know what I'm saying? And I send my regards to them, but now... I spoke to, like, a few of them today, Coach. I told them about, you know, the show go be on today. I sent them website, you know, the pages, you know, be on there. And this is what we need, man. You know what I'm saying? We need to come together, you know what I'm saying? And it's not just about law. You know what I'm saying? It's about what makes sense, common sense, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? And for this DA to sit on TV and, and say what he said, you know, man, where, where do we look at the softness or the, 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 uh, the non respect in that, the non-understanding of what this man saying. For one, the, ne the man would never admit that he did wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because if he admit, di admit that he did wrong, it's other people that's a part of his team that's he going to have to implicate as well. That's right. You know, but yeah. let the proof, let the evidence show, man. And the evidence show, I'm home right now, man. It wasn't me through luck. You know what I'm saying? It was a blessing. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. It was through the Lord, man. You know? And what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong is why you're on. That, that's that's that. That's what it is, man. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Like they say, in any situation, the truth will one day prevail. Right. You know? And it just so look, look how it's 20, it took 20 some years for the truth to set me free, but the truth was always, always there, man. But you know, you know what? I'm saying? That they looked over. But you know what, Maurice? One thing I'm going to do on the next show, I'm going to reach out to him and ask him would he be a part of the show. I, I just yeah, want him yeah, to yeah, break okay. down. You know, I'm, 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 we're going to reach out to him. And we, you know, we do this show once a month. So yeah. next month. We're going to reach out to him and we're ready to start going for the higher guns. And we just, you know, I, like I said, I'm going to let him know I'm not going to attack him on the show. That ain't what the show's yeah. about. But just break it down and explain what he meant by they ought to be lucky. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to ask him yeah, that. But, so, he, but, 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 but that's, not, that's no explanation of that, man, because we got, the, we, we got the, 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 the court system, man, the law system. You know what I'm saying? You don't read nowhere between penal codes that you can find yourself lucky. You know what I'm saying? Right. You yeah. know, and especially when the, when the, when the wrongful conviction come up, how can you turn around and say I'm the lucky one out of a lucky charm? You know what I'm saying? Box. Come on, man. Yeah. I didn't put myself in the situation. I didn't initiate the situation that got me sent to prison. You know, if I would have initiated the situation that got me in prison and then this case got overturned, then you consider me lucky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but right. it's not the case. You know, so why should this man, and like 20-some years later, man, this man just looks, he looks like he could walk in courtroom right now and retry me with his own personal attitude. Right, yeah. You know, if you look at right. the clip, you know, just look at him, the way he said it, you know, come on, that's, that, that right there, that shouldn't send the wrong message to society, man. The, the message to society that should accept that this man <laughs> is out through other people that was knowledgeable with the law and did what they had to do as the law was according to play, right. and it, it set me free, man. Right. Just you know, like it set a lot of other exoneries free. Right. You know what? Check this out. Just let me do this real quick. To anybody that's just, just joining in, hey, welcome to Conversations with Koji. This is part five of I've Been Falsely Accused. Uh, exonerees speak out. We got Mr. Maurice Carwell, who done 20 years in prison for something he didn't even do. I mean, this is deep, everybody. And I know y'all have people in the prison system who's going through it. We got people listening to us all around the world right now. What's up, Nick? 
who's in England. You know what I'm saying? We want to say what's up to you, man, and everybody out there who's listening. We want to say we love you guys, and we do this show out of love. We ain't getting no money for this or nothing. We doing it out of love because we trying to, hey, overturn people's cases and get the right people out and put the wrong people back in. You know what I'm saying? That might have got out on a loophole. They live in their life, but the wrong person is in there suffering. Maurice, I want to ask you something real quick. We got Richard. He's going to be tuning in. I just want him to hold on for one minute and hear this. But Maurice, let the people understand real quick. Not only did you lose 20 years of your life, but can you break it down, man? What else did you lose while you was in there, man? Let let people know how personal this is to you, you know, as far as family and your relationships okay. and everything. Just to break it down for us. Okay, well, let me just let me speak from a, a innocent person right. that has been, you know, taken away from society. My everyday life was living out here. You know what I'm saying? And it always came to, you know, if I did a crime or if I was wrong, I'd be convicted. I'd be sent to prison. Okay, for a crime I didn't convict, commit, it was me getting took away from my life, my friends, my 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 my, my family, everything I knew. I was getting I was being took away from that. You know what I'm saying? And it, when, when it was took away, it, it got took away wrongfully. And after 20-some years, I come back to society now. I don't just not, can't know the, the Internet or know the, the, the advanced uh, uh, stuff that's in life. I walk into the streets now, and I see people that recognize me that I grew up with, man, that was good friends of mine. And they tell me, like, man, how you doing, man? You don't remember? And it hurts, man. Koji, I, I, it's a lot of people I don't remember. After 20 years of, you know, the traumatization that these people have, I can't even recognize family members. You know what I'm saying? That's a part of my... So it's like the traumatization that they provoked in my life, they don't try to help me with nothing in no type of way. And like I say, I respect you saying let's get the DA. Man, Koji, let's do, let's do away with DAs like that coming and saying the wrong things and people knowing something different. We should be reaching out to the families, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like these people, family that I went to prison for all this time, they thought they was getting justice as well as, you know, the, the system... Was get was providing justice, but uh, and then I come home after twenty some years, and these people, family, man, you know what I'm saying? What, what, how, how can you accept that, man? You can't. And then you get get on TV and not try to help this, you know, situation. You know what I'm saying? Even better by listening to what the evidence said, man. A, a person admitted to the crime. You know what I'm saying? And all that, but they still haven't find. Uh, I went to go get this person, man. They still sitting up here saying I'm the person, but a person that they knew a long time ago did it, man. You know what I'm saying? So let's do away with these. DAs making these excuses because you know a lot of them they got the good mouthpiece, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's go with common sense, man. The people we need to re- reach out to and make a difference with is beyond the ones that's trying to have the excuses, man. And he got, he got, you see his face on when he talk. He can, you can tell an excuse. You know what I'm saying? A person that know how to, you know, figure professional, you know, way people speak and they language, body language. You'll see how he step over his own words, man. You know, he say things out of personal vendetta, man. You know, if yeah. this person was to come up right now and say he made a mistake or it was his wrongness, man, he got colleagues that respected him, you know what I'm saying, that honored everything he did. My case, they probably took, when he com- got me convicted, they probably took him on the trip. You know what I'm saying? Right. The right. yeah. So therefore, man, come on, man. We can't keep, you know, a- investing in this, man. You know what I'm saying? People need to come together. And like I talked to the NCIP today, I say, man, you... Y'all and Koji, y'all, y'all set off to help people. Y'all got a major concern for helping people. Let's come together, man. So, you know, hopefully after this show, man, let's come together, man. Okay, yeah, let's we keep this going, man. Let's make it more powerful than what it is, man. Right. And let me, let, let me say this real quick, Maurice, and then we're going uh, we, we to uh, get Richard in. I just wanted Richard to hear this for a minute because I know he's got a lot to say. He was great on the show last week, and that's why I asked him to come back yeah. because we really going to you know, milk his brain today, and he's going to give us his great knowledge to keep us safe as a community you know he has a lot of love from us anytime you from retire from something else to take on something else that's that's out of love yes. you know what i'm saying yes, and i got a lot is. of i got a lot of respect for him but maurice i just want the people to know this real quick you know me and you we we don't talk every now and then me and you really talk we really friends you get what i'm saying now yes, yes. what i'm saying is tell people real quick how you are still considered a a a, a, a villain you still considered, you know, an ex, ex-con. Tell them what happened when you went to go visit a family member yesterday in prison real quick. Yeah, yeah, we'll man. Get, you we'll know, get Richard I, in you know, so, he uh, can, so he can speak on this as well. 
Oh, uh, yeah, this was this was a trip, man. I, you know, out of all my time that, out of, in society, you know, I've been productive. I've been, you know, being positive, you know what I'm saying? So I thought, you know, a family member got in trouble. I said, man, I'm going to go speak to him, you know what I'm saying, try to share a little, you know, understanding, you know what I'm saying, about life and how to stay out, man. You know what I'm saying? So I go to the county jail of Sacramento to try to see. I turn, I fill out the paperwork first time ever trying and, uh, Gave my ID. Why right when I get up to the window? I wait like 45 minutes. I wait up to the window. I, I have no no concern whatsoever. Just you know on what I'm gonna say to my my man, man. So I get in there, get to the window. Right when I walk up to the window, man, this man tell me straight up. He said, man, you gotta eat. You had an E number. You can't go in there. I'm like, hold on. Wait, for, for one, I know what the E number means. That was my prison that number. I'm like, what you mean, sir? He said, you. Gotta, I, I said, hold on. I got a. Uh, I'm, I've been exonerated, you know what I'm saying? I'm an exoneree. He was like, man, I'm going by what the computer say, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're not the computer. I'm like, hold on, man. I, I, I was like, man, you need to understand. Can I speak to somebody, man? It was, it was hurt, man. I didn't really know how to accept it, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Telling me that my, just because I've been in prison and I've been exonerated and I've been home all this time, man, that it's, it's against me, man. You know what I'm saying? And it hurt me, man. And I was like, do I sit here and just be like, no, I'm in the right, man. I'm home now. I can, I can, I can fight this system right here in my face. That's, that I know it's wrong. Man, I had to swallow my pride and it hurt it, man. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what to do. I was like, man, it was like tears in my eyes because that's what I didn't want. I didn't want to never be labeled and victimized never again, man, or pinpointed, man. When I walked in there, I thought, you know, if, if they wouldn't know I'm in prison or they wouldn't know I got an E number unless I say, you know what I'm saying? But come on, man. That hurt me, man. And I'm like, what part of the society that could continue allowing this, man? Is it penal codes that's what's going to keep me with my E number? Or is it with people with, with understanding and common sense of this law and society, man, that we live in? To, man, I'm home now. I'm home because I shouldn't have never been there. That's so right. why should I be held accountable to a number that was in there? That's right. That's hurt me, man. Maurice, let me, let me, say, this, let me say this real quick. Some people don't understand what an E number is. Can you explain what an E number is okay, to people? Okay, uh, E number... A uh, e number is just like your name. When you go in prison, you no longer have a name. You they they go by your last name and e number. But your e number is what they locate you, and they can tell you anything about you. If a person calls and want to find out if a person is in prison, they will say, "Do you know his number?" You know what I'm saying? And they might say e nine five. That's my my number was e nine five three six nine. You push that in, they go straight to me. Just like a car on a license plate. If you put pushing them license plate number, they go straight to the owner of that car. That's what numbers in prison mean, man. You know. So I'm still out here walking with a prison number. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and it hurt. You know, and then, like, um, let me just say one more thing, Cody, and I apologize. Richard Rose, and I appreciate, you know, you being here. I just want to say one more thing. Man, Social Security. I filed for Social Security. They tell me I'm, I don't have a, 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 a work history. I said, Madam, I've been working in prison for all my time there, you know what I'm saying? In prison, man, I did it. I, I was I, I was a person that worked, man. You know what I'm saying? Just like a person worked out in society mm -hmm. for 15, 20 years, and they retired. Man, I worked in prison for a crime that I didn't do, but I made myself be constructive. So I worked every day, and it don't it don't account for nothing when it, when I come back out here to Social Security, mm -hmm. and I feel that's wrong, man. You know, I suffer behind this. I'm, I'm 45 years old that put my back and my soul and everything in prison to try to stay alive and survive and get up out of there. You know, just like a person would do on the street. He has worked and sweat and to, to they to they to, to they able to retire. Right. I don't have any retire fees, but I should be entitled to a way of life out here, man. That's you right. You know? And you know what? They say it too. You entitled to seven, so what is it, $700,000? How much is it? That's okay. They say every day in prison, you're entitled you, for a wrongful conviction. You're entitled to. You should be granted a hundred dollars. That's a law. But this law is a conflicting law because you got to understand. We all consider the law as not being perfect. This law has not been granting people what they got in, got coming to them due to the fact that people sits on the board. Legal people sits on the board and decide do they do we do you get this money and the attorney general the head attorney general sits on the board man so how 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 hard can it be man it's very hard you know what I'm saying here I come I don't even have medical when I come home I, I when I you know I, I don't have nothing no kind of support you know but I gotta fight for this and it takes years to fight for it and it's not guaranteed man. You know what I'm saying? And that's wrong. It's not guaranteed by they, they law. The same law that we don't break and convict an innocent person, man. Right. You know? And then on top of that... We shouldn't have to, we, we should, we should have to fight for it. When an innocent person is seen on TV and the conviction is overturned, 
When that person come home, there should be a program in place like it is in Texas, man. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't have to come home and fight and stress and, and do the same thing by proving to a court that you was innocent. You're home. <laughs> right. You know, that's the system, man. And, and common sense, you know, that that's that's what I'm, 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 I live my life with common sense, man. Because if I live my law according to penal codes, you know what I'm saying, I'll be wrongfully convicted. I'll be wrongfully misled. I respect the law in right. every aspect. But for his living, I'm going to live to my common sense, which tell me right or wrong, man, because I can't let the, <laughs> the, the justice system tell me walking down the street is right or wrong. Right. I'm going to know that from common sense. It happened to me before. Right. Well, what, right. What we going to do, Maurice, that's what we going to do. We're going to take a break for a minute. We come back, everybody. We've got Richard Rosen. He'll be coming in. I wanted him to hear Maurice's case, and maybe he can, you know, help get Maurice on the right road. we got Jeffrey who will be coming in also, and we're going to talk to Jeffrey about that. Jeffrey also knows about, you know, the money that you're entitled to. And we all one family on this show. We all here to help each other, and that's why we're doing this show. So we're going to share great information, and like I said, we're going to fight like hell for our family, and that's why I'm here today. So, hey, if anybody's just tuning in, this is part five. I've been falsely accused with Mr. Hey, Maurice Caldwell definitely is my co-host. We got Richard Rosen who's coming in, and, hey, like I said, y'all definitely don't want to miss what's coming up in this next hour. Right after this commercial, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, we back. Welcome to Conversations with Koji. I am the host, Koji. Hey, we got Mr. Maurice Caldwell. We got Jay, my co-host. We got Uncle Drew in. That's my co-host. We a team. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to say, you know, real quick, what did you think about what Maurice said, uh, Uncle Drew? Then I'm going to come around to Jay, and she's going to bring Richard in. Yeah, Maurice, you're, you're telling the truth about what's happening to a lot of people, and uh, I'm proud of you, brother. You're, you're here this week, and you're going to be here with us for a long time. And uh, we got to get the word out to the right people and start changing laws and, and getting these people that are hiding. You know, they're just cowards hiding behind the law and uh, putting people like you in jail. And they can't, you know, the DA is, uh, like you said, they probably, you know, did him a favor for, for uh, getting the wrong person in jail. And that's that's not justice. Yeah. We're, tra- we're trying to get justice in this country. That's what, that's what it's supposed to stand for. There it is. All right. Jay, let's bring Richard in. Well, we want to welcome Richard Rosen back into the show. Um, as we said before, he's a uh, retired emeritus of law, and um, he helped defend many people on death row and um, started the Innocence Project in North Carolina, um, the UNC North Carolina Law School. So we want to welcome Richard Rosen back. <laughs> Richard, my friend, how you doing today? I'm fine, thanks. R- Richard, what did you think about that? I wanted you to hear this for a minute, you know, let well, me really talk and stretch out, you know, with what he needed to say. What would you think about there, it? There are two things he said, the two <clears throat> points he made that really struck me. The first one was the inability of the, of the uh, system to admit when it makes errors and to treat people as innocent when, in fact, they, it, they've been proved innocent. And that's... That's really sad, and I mean, I, I think one of the things we found is, I found in the last couple of years is you really get two approaches. Sometimes you get district attorneys who admit mistakes. I, I actually had a client, the district attorney came up and apologized to him, said that, you know, we thought we were getting a guilty man, we didn't, and I felt bad about it. Yeah. Um, you have uh, uh, some places where they will uh, uh, give compensation, and do it rather quickly. Right. And then you get other cases where uh, the people are ashamed or afraid or don't have the character to admit they made a mistake. Mm-hmm. And they will continue to claim that totally innocent people are guilty even when a judge has declared them to be innocent. And that's the first thing that struck me, and, and, and Maurice is, is caught in that. And that's, you know, one of the things is, the, is, is convicting the wrong people to start with, and the other one is the, when when the district attorney or the police officers or whoever was involved refused to admit they made a mistake. And that really compounds the harm. The other point Maurice made, and when he was talking about his visit to the jail, it really struck me because it's really, it's really hard from what I've seen, and I'm not in the position, so I'm seeing it from somebody who's been observing. It's really hard for people to put their lives back together when they get out. It's hard for them in many ways, to become full members of society because society doesn't let them. 
You know, they're still known by their the prison number still there. He did time in prison, and the fact that he was innocent doesn't change the way the jail treated him. Right. All they care about is that he had that 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 E number. Right. Um, and then Social Security doesn't give. You know, you get Social Security by earning money. Well, when you work when you're in prison, you're essentially a slave. You don't get paid. Hmm. And so, therefore, by rule of law, he's ineligible for Social Security. So I think his, you know, what I heard in the last 15 minutes was really a a very vivid and painful description of what too many people face. Right. You know what? Let me ask you this, Richard. So it's almost like he's a legal immigrant, right, Maurice? Well, illegal. Yeah, uh, illegal, yeah. Actually, no, he, he, he's, not, yeah. He's, he's in worse shape in some ways. Oh, wow. I mean, you know, he is, he is, he, he, in the eyes of many, he is, he, 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 it is hard for society to treat him as really innocent. We have not adjusted to that yet. You know what? Break it down for me real quick, Richard. And then Maurice, I want you to come in and I want you to talk to Richard, you know, and, and, and you can give him props on being on the show. But hold on, Richard, break it down for us. Cause I want the, I want the, the community and I want our listeners to understand what you mean by that. When you said Maurice, these, these exonerees are in a worser position than, you know, illegal immigrants. Can you break it down for me, please? Well, I mean, they're, they're, in the eyes of many, they're, they're not really innocent. I mean, once somebody is convicted, and I've seen this happen again and again, people consider them guilty even when the evidence proves that they were, in fact, innocent. Mm. And it is really hard to get that message across to people that, you know, this is somebody who really was wrongly convicted. It is it is fairly new, the phenomenon of anybody accepting the fact that we wrongly convict people. Until DNA evidence came along, we assumed everybody really was guilty and some people tricked their way out. Well, now we know differently, but I think many people don't accept that, and the law has not yet adjusted to that. I mean, it should be that if you are exonerated, your e-record should be wiped out. That's right. Yeah, I mean... You should no longer be in the system, but we, we don't have, most places, we don't have means of doing it, because all it does track is who was in the system, and it doesn't it assumes everybody in the system was, in fact, guilty. Right. Okay, Maurice, go ahead. I want you to speak out because I, I, uh-huh. I feel your heart. Okay. Okay, Richard Rosen, first of all, I thank you for being in there, man. You give a lot of, you know, inside professional knowledge, you know what I'm saying, that people should be aware of. And I got. I want to say just, some, just, just like Richard Rosen say, okay, the difference between me and a legal alien we have been aware of how to deal with legal aliens. We got a program in, in place to where we can acknowledge and identify legal aliens. Like he said, there's never been a place and so DNA came out in the wrong the ID witness in place of a, a innocent person. You know what I'm saying? California is the the, the place to be, you know where we come from, and it's like Texas got the most respectable is innocent project law that when you get when you found innocent and you go to you live in Texas or you within that state. They got a program in place, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like California and every other state should have a, 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 a way to adopt it to another state. If another state is doing the good of an innocent project, if the other, another state is doing the good of adopting any kind of law that can help us from and prevent us from sending a wrongful person to prison, that's what we should do. You know what I'm saying? And we shouldn't wait for the assembly or people like that to pass. It should be the people's choice. You know, us, the common sense. Because I look at, if, what can, if I could do something to change the system and it was within my power and I, could, I know it could make people satisfy and help, help, I would do it. You know, and we got people like that that just don't want to accept the fact that they make mistakes and they decisions. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to be the fall guy. Don't nobody want to be responsible, especially when it comes to taking an innocent person in life, you know, for so long. That's right. You know, that's the worst that can happen. That's, that's like next to death. And it has been death to other people that's been on death row for crimes they didn't have. And if it wasn't, like Richard said, if it wasn't for DNA, people wouldn't have never been starting aware of innocent people in prison for crimes they didn't do. DNA was a door opener to help innocent people really show that they're innocent. And then now it's come to ID which it happened in my case. You know, people say things and they point the wrong person out just as well a person could sit in your face and tell you a bald face lie. We shouldn't convict and send a person to prison for that, but they do. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and it don't make no sense. But like I say, Richard Rosen, I'm honored, man, and I'm blessed, you know what I'm saying, to, to just hear you being able to share your knowledge on this show. Again, many more. 
Glad to do it. You know what, Richard? You know what, Maurice? You definitely right now. I'm gonna hit on something that you said, and I'm gonna ask Richard this question. Richard, what are what are the common causes of a wrongful conviction to you? Well, the most common one is is mistaken identification, um, and you, you know you have a whole litany of other causes. You've got uh, you've got you know uh, bad science, um, uh, people, uh, scientists either cheating or making mistakes. Uh, claiming that, uh, uh, for instance, that a hair, uh, uh, they can look at a hair and say it came from the defendant when that was never true, and now we know it's not true. You've had uh, a, a scientist in Oklahoma who was caught cheating, somebody in Houston who was caught cheating, down in North Carolina where I, I live. Uh, we found at the State Bureau of Investigation that their scientists were were uh, 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 cheating, and you know you have that. You have false confessions. The Central Park Five in New York, who had their confessions coerced, five of them, uh, and they turned out to be innocent. So you get the whole range of things. The biggest one is mistaken eyewitness identification, and there are reforms that can be done to make that less likely. Uh, but it's very slow, and right. very few states have, in fact, enacted the reforms about the way they conduct those identifications. Okay. Well, can can we prevent the uh, the convictions of the innocents? How how can we do that? We can't prevent them totally. I mean, part of it is because you're going to have these are human beings, and you're going to have mistakes. So I'm I'm not one who believes we'll ever have a perfect system, which really raises questions about the death penalty. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. That's right. People are going to get it wrong, and right. that does happen. We can certainly lessen the number of wrongful convictions seriously. We can do it by understanding at the beginning that we have an imperfect system and trying to make sure that we get the right person. We can do it, for instance, by requiring all the police and prosecution files to be turned over to the defense. So if there are other suspects, if somebody else confesses, that can't be hidden. If there, if an eyewitness first says it wasn't the defendant and then says it was the defendant, that can't be hidden. We need transparency. That can help. We're never going to have a perfect system. Right, okay. You know what, Uncle Drew, you want to say something real quick to Richard? Well, t- to me that's a form of perjury where, where people lie in court. So if you're bringing uh, evidence in there that you're uh, being de- de- deceptive about, then that's what it is. It's a form of perjury that, that the uh, prosecution is bringing into the courtroom. Yeah, I mean, that's happened. Sometimes it's perjury, sometimes it's mistakes. I've, I've been involved in cases where the witness was really telling the truth as best as they knew, and they were wrong. But sometimes it is, it is, it is, uh, it is lying. Right. And we've had that, and we've had that too much. Um, you know, you've had... Police in Chicago beating confessions out of people. Oh, yeah. uh, you had the Central Park Five being interrogated for uh, God knows how long, 18, 20 hours before they confessed. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, you, you have all of that. Right. You know what, Richard, let me ask you this real quick, and then I'll go back to Maurice. What, may, what, what point did you hit when you said, you know what, I want to do this full time? I mean, these people really need help. How how? How did, you know, this whole situation happen for you? Well, I didn't do it full-time. I was a law professor. Okay. And, and so it was always something that I was doing because I, I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, what happened is I had a client who I thought was treated unfairly, uh, which is not uncommon, but then we were also able to prove his innocence. Mm. And it was, it, was, it was at the beginning of the DNA revolution. Right. My client was the first one in North Carolina who... DNA showed was innocent, and it, it uh, uh, at having done his case, I got letters from lots of inmates in asking for help, and I couldn't answer all of them. So mm-hmm. we started an innocence project in Duke Law School and UNC Law School, and so it didn't. It wasn't a decision. It, it was. It was. It was a a uh, uh, being in a certain place at a certain time with a certain set of skills. Right. I hear you. I hear you. You're definitely right about that. And you know, hey, and thank God for you that, I mean, you did, you know what I'm saying, take interest in this situation because, you know, you're touching and you're changing lives. And I know Maurice feel the same way. Maurice, it's on you. Yes. Hey, can I say something that's been, I wanted to share this even last time. Okay. Now, you know, this this just really validated, you know, when they spoke to this DA that was my the district attorney back in the days, when this DA got on there and said, consider myself lucky, this man still feels that I was the one that committed this crime. What message, okay, without just 
understand what I'm saying. I mean, without, you know, getting the wrong impression about what I'm saying, just understand where I come from. By this man still telling the, the society what his personal feeling is with him not accepting responsibility, what message do you think that sent to this family? This family is sitting up there grieving, and they thought they'd been get, really having justice for all this time, and now this district attorney and other district attorneys that don't want to accept the fact, you know, they don't consider my, my, my livelihood no more. You know what I'm saying? What if this victim family had a, 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 a revengeful attitude? You know what I'm saying? And go by what they do, what, what these people say out their mouth when they don't want to accept the responsibility or, and just accept the law for what it was, man. I'm an innocent person. And just ride and let's support that instead of, you know, this DA. You know, because if a DA tell me that somebody is not guilty of a crime or was innocent of a crime, I will, will, will I want to believe that? I will surely do believe, especially when this person was convicted. Now to get out, what was this counter word? Lucky? Now what, what, what do this victim family say? Oh. Lucky, hold on. We we don't want no person that did something to our family to be out lucky. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so the that. society needs to understand this to this as well. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I say, man, we shouldn't be you know speaking to this DA no more. You know what I'm saying? We we see this bull that he do. You know what I'm saying? We need to reach out to these family members and let them see the same evidence that was there. You know what I'm saying? And that was hid right. and that should have been presented. You know what I'm saying? We should be able to have a side to do that. And that's what I want, man. You know what I'm saying? This district attorney is no longer you know what I'm saying a respectable person from when he did what he did back then. Right. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. It was a personal. You know I'm saying, and everything now he speak on when you sit in front of him inside his personal feelings. Right. You know, let's not go with his personal feelings. Let's go with you know the the, the, the evidence, man. What happened with the innocent me being innocent, and the victim's families should be aware and know that. I hear you. You know, I hear you. Wait a minute, Maurice. That's what we need to do. We need to go to a commercial real quick. We need to take a break for All a minute, right. and we'll be right back. And we coming right back in. Hey, we got Mr. Maurice Carwell, and we got Richard Rosen in in this hour. Hey, everybody, get your pens and your paper, please. We're gonna make this a quick commercial. As we come back in, we got something to ask Richard you don't want to miss. Hey, we back, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with Koji. I'm your host, Koji. Hey, I've been falsely accused, part five. This is our show today. We got Mr. Maurice Carwell, and we got Richard Rosen in today. And I want to go to Richard right off the bat. Richard, I want to ask you a question. How do we discover the identity of innocence in prison, and how can we as a community help them out? Well, I think one of the ways, that there, are, there are innocence projects in most states now, primarily based in law schools, where you have students volunteering to answer letters and investigate cases. And to the extent that we can provide support for those projects and help them with their, their, their efforts, that's certainly a good way to do it. Um, most of the people who have been exonerated have come uh, out of one innocence project or another. Um, the other way we can do it is there are certainly, in North Carolina, we have a body called the Innocence Inquiry uh, Commission, which actually has uh, po- empowered by the state legislator to investigate claims of innocence and to bring it forth in front of a commission and then in front of some judges. And we've had a number of people declared innocent uh, through this, this body's efforts. Um, it is a recognition that by the state that we convict innocent people and that the state has an obligation to get them out, that you can't just depend upon volunteer law students. And it's been, you know, we've had um, a number of people who, who uh, uh, use that process. So there are ways to do it. There are ways to, for instance, to allow people who claim innocence to get discovery of their case files, to find out what was in there. It, it will take a commitment on the part of society to recognizing that we we owe it to these people who have been falsely convicted to give them any sort of help we can. I hear you. You know, Richard, nothing I want to ask you, and then I'm going to ask Maurice the same thing. So, Maurice, this is a two-in-one for both of you guys. I know y'all going to answer it two different ways. Richard, what would you say to anybody that's in prison right now and they're having problems getting out and they've been trying and trying to go through the Innocence Project and it seems like things are failing, but they are truly innocent. What would you say to them right now? Well, all you can do is keep trying. I mean, I will tell you the other thing, Koji, that I think is the most frustrating thing, and that is we would get hundreds of letters of of, uh, defendants claiming innocent, men and women claiming innocence. A lot of them, there's no way to prove innocence even if they are innocent. Wow. You know, if it's been too long ago, the witness died. I mean, the, mm. the, the really, the, the worst circumstances I've seen is somebody who I am convinced was innocent, who convicted 20, 30 years ago, 
all the all the physical evidence has been destroyed. The eyewitnesses have died. Mm. What do you do? Right. Um, you know, how do you how do you? So I, you know, one of the things, and, and certainly Maurice is not lucky. He's anything but lucky. But the reality is, there are other people in Maurice's situation where there is simply no way to go back in and find out what really happened. Mm. And so, to me, the hardest task of what I ever did was writing to somebody and say, "You very well might be innocent, but I don't see any way to prove that." Right. You know what? You know the story about Hurricane Reuben Carter, right? What about when you get a you know we just, we down to five minutes real quick but I just want to ask you this real quick what about when you get a dirty cop that just feels like yo you you know like he told him your black ass you going down I mean they even went to the guy and he looked at Reuben Carter and his friend and said no and it was a white man he said no that ain't them and then he said no look closely and then the guy said again no it ain't them and then he said well the guy's in shock right now because he's he's laying there shot. I mean, what about when people get bum raps like that? I mean, what do you think about that, Rube? You know, I think it's Rube? awful, and I think you try to do anything you can about it, and what you hope is that you can discover that that happened. That's right. You know, but if, if, if when this case comes up, the eyewitness is dead or can't be found, and the cop is no longer around and won't admit what happened, and if the cop never wrote it down... So the other thing to remember is we can get some of the innocent people out of prison. We're not going to be able to get all of them out. And that's, to me, that's the most frustrating thing about all of this, and in some ways the most painful. So innocent to proven guilty is really out the window when we're talking about this kind of case, right? Well, once somebody is proven guilty, they're, you know, they, they, they... they're assumed guilty, even but, if, in fact, they're innocent. Right, that's what and I was going to say. not proven guilty. Once a jury says guilty, <laughs> then society continues to assume they're guilty, even, in fact, if they're innocent, unless you're can can find the evidence okay. and that's the hard thing there are thousands of i'm sure there are thousands of innocent people in prison who will never get out wow you know what we're down to four minutes but richard i want to give you a minute of it i want you to talk to maurice and tell maurice maurice get your pen and paper and get ready for this i want you to tell maurice some of the things you think he should do now you know that you that you've seen through other people that you dealt with uh richard you know what i'm saying just words of encouragement and you know some things he can do you know to try to move forward they won't give him social security he suffered a back injury in prison you know while he was working so you know he's going through that right now he's got a new baby on the way what do you think is best for him maurice i don't have i don't have the ultimate answer for you you're you're, you're probably everything i hear everything you say impresses me about who you are as a person What I can say is that to the extent you have people who care about you, who you care about, that those are the people that are going to make your life bearable in the years to come. Hey, I thank you very much, Rosen. And, and, you know, them them was honorable and real words that I will take to heart because, you know, that's how I live it every day. And let me just say this about what he said earlier about, you know, our society, man. You know, society should, you know, be able to just start embracing the things that, you know, you never for, 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 uh, thought you'd ever know or see. Now and it's in your face and it has erupted. You know, society should just prepare themselves on how to try to work with it and not just, you know, let it go. You know, because that's what they did for many years, let it go. You know, so it's in the, in the, in the you know, time and places for people to come together. And like, you know, Cody, what you do, I'm, I'm going to really be, you know, speaking to the uh Anderson Project Director, you know, I want you to do as well, man. Y'all come together, man. Yeah, you know I what I'm saying? Because it's all about, it's a, it's a foundation thing, you know what I'm saying, that people need to come as, you know, as one. You know, like when I'm with the Innocent Brothers, when we go to conferences and all that, I'll be feeling so understanding and so free around other people that was bit, that was exonerated. I may be like hundreds of people. Man, I feel so, you know, how you say, validated. Yeah. You know, but when I walk out of my house and go okay. places, I feel I'm I'm not validated the same way right. as I'm with them. You know what wait, I'm saying? And, and I look at Wait a minute, Maurice. Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. I have to cut you just for one minute and we can finish this up. Because right, I'm down to one minute real quick. And I just want to say, go you ahead. know, Richard, I definitely want to thank you for being on. And you know we're doing this once a month. You know, and Richard, I'm definitely going to contact you again because of some stuff that I want to talk to you about. And, and and I want you to swing back through the show, and we're going to shine a light on something else. And me and you, we'll talk about that off the air, okay? Glad to do it, and glad you're doing this. Take right. care. Hey, I appreciate you, man. God bless you and your family, and please keep doing God's work, all right? All right. Thank That's you, fine. Richard. All right. Thank you, Rosen. You have a good day, Mike. You too, Mark. All right. So, Maurice, 
Hold on, we got another right. we got another great guest coming up in a minute. Jeffrey and William, they'll be coming in in a second. And hey, everybody, hey, this is the innocent. I've been falsely accused, part five. That's been our first hour with Richard Rosen. And I definitely want y'all to get y'all pens and paper and get ready for the second hour. The second hour is going to be really full of action. And when I say action, because we're taking action and we're talking about things that's going on. So, hey, much love to you guys out there. And y'all stay prepared, stay locked in. Hey, like I said, this is about community. This is about love. And this is about what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. We'll be right back. Much love, guys.